in this second live session. Today, we'll be talking to you about a little bit about what you did in week one and what's coming up in week two. And I'm just waiting to see if we can record it. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, we're recording. We are recording, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I could see it. Okay, awesome. So, um, so Christine, if you want, you can go ahead and start. Oh. All right. Well, uh, good morning or good evening or good afternoon, everyone. Um, in your different time zones, uh, we've got 23 people here, which is good. Um, <clears throat> week one still has a few uh, comments to be responded to. Uh, we've had a very lively discussion, <laughs> I think, in the various discussion forums. So um, I thank the... Um, uh, participants, the moderators for their active participation there. And uh, it's been really good getting to know everyone and finding out uh, about their different areas of expertise and also about uh, their expectations. So there is more to come in that. We have started hinting um, at some of the tools uh, and that's coming up in week two, some of the um, uh, online spaces where uh, discussions and the sessions in general could be held, but also a few tools that we've discussed um, have been interesting. So um, we look forward to more in week two where more of this uh, is discussed in depth. But I also wanted to make sure that um, I remind the moderators to complete the week one EVO uh, needs assessment survey, which is very important because it tells us what your needs are regarding those tools and online spaces and what experience you have and what you don't have in particular so that we can tailor um, our discussions a little bit more specifically to your needs. So, so far, we have 15 filled out. This was as of last night. We would like to have a few more uh, than 15. So please go back. It's not closed. Please go back in and complete uh, that needs assessment survey in week one. And um, Larissa, do you have anything else to add? Uh, just uh, one comment to uh, Mushtaq. Thanks for just uh, updating us on the things that we probably need to update on our site too in these resources, uh, which is very helpful that we found from this uh, lively discussion, as Christine mentioned, that it's a real like professional exchange of the information and helping each other. Yeah, it's been a, a good discussion, good collaborations, um, I think. Um, and we will continue uh, collaborating and interacting and um, it should be fun. So with that, um, I'll turn it over to the week two uh, moderators. Okay, so can you hear me? Uh, I've just unmuted myself, hopefully. Yes, uh, my name is Natasha uh, and I'm here with my friends Sanya and Barek. We will be moderating, co-moderating week two, and uh, we look forward to the lively discussions that we're going to have this week. It's a very interesting week because we look at online spaces uh, in more detail and we make some choices and it's good to have a, a mix uh, of uh, experienced moderators and uh, new moderators so that we all learn from each other. We are a rather uh, big group this year, which is excellent. And then this again means that we can learn a lot from each other. Um, so, okay, um, my computer is a little buggy, so maybe uh, the screen will not go as fast as I would like it to. So, right, you already know uh, who we are. We are your coordinators, we are your moderators and week two uh, starts officially on October 25th and goes officially, lasts officially until October the 31st. But uh, of course, uh, uh, the discussions will probably continue well after that. Um, 
I hope you can't hear my neighbor who is drilling, but I do have this uh, thing enabled in the background um, which blocks background sound. So I, I kind of hope you only hear my voice. Um, okay. Starting with uh, Moderator uh, Development Week 2. Yeah, and I would like to, to hand the mic over to you occasionally. So if somebody wants to say something, you can raise your hand or unmute yourself. I will try to ask you questions. Uh, also, it would be very good if somebody warned me about the time in case the discussion um, goes on a little longer. Um, why do we need a session logo? Well, if you look at our own logo, which proudly says the 20th anniversary, um, uh, you, will, you will understand how important the logo is. Um, your session logo should be unique. It should be adaptable. It should be appropriate and it should be timeless um, in, the case, in the sense that you can use it again next year, maybe with a couple of changes. Um, unique to your session, adaptable so that you can maybe add or change things, appropriate for your session, and timeless. And I had a very interesting discussion with Lane yesterday evening. Um, I think Lane is her name, so I apologize if I mispronounce that. Um, she uh, went and edited out things from her logo. Her first version was um, kind of trying to reveal too much. I think a logo should be like a teaser. It should just give you an idea about what's coming in your session. But really, if you want to know what the session is about, you definitely need to click that link and to see what, what, it's, uh, what it's about. So the logo makers page um, is the page in, um, um, uh, in Canvas, which, which provides links um, for different logo makers. I'm not going to click on it because my computer is very buggy. And if I go there, we will be there like five minutes, 10 minutes later. Would somebody like to comment on the logos before we move on? Is anybody stuck with the logos or uh, you can comment through chat or you can uh, raise your hand? You don't have to, but uh, uh, yeah, somebody is talking in chat yeah that's me yeah i think that uh, that uh, the link can be found in canvas mm -hmm. it's all in canvas so okay great so um right uh, lane is raising her hand lane can yeah. you unmute yourself um, mm -hmm. i have a question um my logo i've applied for a trademark for my logo. Um, I haven't received the response yet um, from the federal um, trademark office. Is it in a pro I mean, I can take it out and or put it in. It's easy. But which what should I do? Take it out? I mean, I have a TM right now, which means you've applied for it. But it doesn't have to be there. But it is I have applied for a trademark. So I don't know what to do. Yeah, I didn't answer that one. I didn't actually, I wasn't sure what to say. So it's good that you are uh, you are asking this. I can only give you my personal opinion. I don't think it's inappropriate. What do, uh, is there any official evil policy on, on this that- Tanya? Now that, yeah, okay. Hi, uh, it's Judy. Hi. Um, if you did apply for a trademark logo, I would put the, put the uh, trademark thing on your logo just for safety's sake because you did apply for a trademark um it does take a long time before you do get an answer from the feds um it's, that i can tell been, you for a fact it's been almost four months <laughs> yeah no it, and it's probably going to be longer with the pandemic and people being out of offices but it takes okay. a long time because they have to do a major search and then they have to put it out there and there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, steps uh, in getting a trademark logo. Okay. So I would put it there for now, um, just okay. as a safety marker in case, you know, anybody else is looking about to see and try to use Sorry. that before you get I yours put through. I will tell you about our logo from Uzbekistan. Thank you. Our logo is there only a red decor in the center of Tashkent. Uh, Hotel Uzbekistan is mentioned. 
because it's the now place where all international tourists begin their journey around Tashkent. And I would like to include unique, adaptable, appropriate, timeless, and digital inclusive because at our logo will add some hashtags with Evo21 and five soups of social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and what more, five. We will be mentioned five, whereas this other hashtags would be easily found. So, the, it is, so to say, digitalization in action, and our bus decor will be the first one, also directed to some social medias and the places where English is spoken because red decor is brought from Britain, a symbol for a Vienna country as well as English is spoken. Then the novelty will be that only international tourism embark on this bus. In our case, it will be all our participants. We have sponsor, he will pay the tickets for the bus, and we have sponsor who will pay for our outdoor activities and even outdoor eating, where we organize a seminar about cuisines, features of Uzbekistan, because Uzbekistan was a winner in 1918 new cuisine competition. It's our logo. Logo is also uh, thoughtful, but very well understood by all Uzbeki and international tourists. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so if there are no more questions, yeah, I, I, I told you already, Halema, I, I like the Red Bus. For me, it's one of the earliest associations with English language because almost every textbook yes. had one back mm -hmm. when I was studying English for the first time. It's cheerful. Yeah. I love red and uh, well, you have my my approval for what it's worth. We're here. We're, we're here all equal. So I can only when you ask me. Yeah, um, yeah I am a week week two coordinator, but I, I can only tell you my personal opinion in the sense of I like it or uh, I usually do. <laughs> OK. Uh, Yes, I just wanted uh, Ma, uh, Natasha just a second mm -hmm. to say that yeah. I shared a link here on, on the chat box of the mm -hmm. 15 best online logo generators. So you are free to uh, create one online and then use it. Uh, as far as uh, Evo is concerned, we are not really very formal in using uh, logos here. Uh, even Evo, the one we use, uh, we have been using for 20 years now is not uh, registered as a, a trademark. So mm -hmm. since we are not really commercial and we don't, it's not uh, something um, where we make money. <laughs> so I think uh, we not, just use uh, logos we, yeah. It is not, because both is a symbol of very cheap transportation, public transportation. But yeah, it depends on all, on all, either a bus system. or anything, yes. anyone, any group, anything, yeah. any group is free to choose the logo oh. that reflects their objectives. Uh, the yeah, objectives yeah. for example, the I idea, love We have no Judy. objection the at all. Was the, the idea was that you will hear some features of Uzbek English. Therefore, we will roll in mobile roaring class where Uzbek English will be heard and all our co-moderators will see because they bring the participants into bus and we make a journey as a class, as real class, okay? Yeah. Okay. It's our, uh, okay. Idea. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, yes. Moving on. Uh, now, this is where, let me admit, Cheryl, this is where uh, real work starts. We are here together. I know it can be a bit of a, of a roller coaster. You know, you, you, you need to talk to us and you need to work on completing your session. But we are really here just to help you. And you will continue completing your session proposal after this training. Um, sorry, development session. Uh, uh, so. What should your uh, syllabus, session syllabus have? It should have everything that gives your participants a clear idea about 
what your session is about. Uh, so there should be a title. Well, you know, try to make it unique and appropriate again, like the logo. There should be an abstract. So um, the brief description of your session and, uh, you know, you should do it um, in a professional way, not too formal, but professional. Your target audience should be clear. I mean, is it teachers of young learners? Is it teachers of uh, adults? Is it uh, new teachers, everybody? Uh, you should have a sponsor stated somewhere. Um, if it's a TESOL interest session, uh, section or a forum, an e-group, any kind of sponsor, anyone who's kind of vouching for you. Well, not in the monetary sense, because we are, everything is free of charge here. Uh, then there should be a week by week outline. And I can tell you from the point of view of, um, um, I've been taking a lot of these sessions. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, really addicted to them. So I want to see what's happening in each week. So week one should be introductions. Please don't overload your week with uh, week one with content. People are still finding their way around. And uh, you know, uh, especially now after you've been working online, um, some of us have been working remotely, you know how, how um, kind of uh, technology will let you down. So sometimes even experienced people can't find they, their way around. So be patient with them or also let them know each other through different warm-up activities and forums, discussions. Weeks two and four should focus on the, con uh, sorry, yeah, weeks two and four should focus on the content. And then in week five, let the, uh, your participants breathe and kind of sum up, let them evaluate what they did. Maybe let them create a coherent, I don't know, lesson plan where they bring everything together. Uh, if you want to offer your session again, then you should, you should have some kind of questionnaire, um, some kind of poll. Another thing your um, um, proposal should have clearly stated is the communications media. So where is communication happening? So right now for our session, we have Canvas and we have Zoom. Canvas for asynchronous uh, discussions and Zoom for synchronous discussions. So you should have both. So do you want to have a web page on top of that? Something like a wiki where you can, or a blog where you can organize everything clearly, your links, etc. cetera. Uh, you should also have your biographical statement, 50 words and the link to a web page if available for all moderators. Well, we want to know who you are, of course. And the statement of commitment, I think we changed this to just uh, lead moderator this year. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So it's just that you commit that you will complete moderator training and hold session in the time frame indicated. Uh, this is very important because everything is voluntary and nothing is paid. So we are all volunteers. So we need to somehow commit to uh, our participants. They will be the ones who are um, expecting things from us. And when I say complete moderator training and hold session in the time frame indicated, this is very important. Um, if you are giving some kind of digital badge or maybe a certificate of attendance, which shouldn't be formal in any way, please wrap it all up on time and uh, let your uh, participants have it uh, for um, uh, let, let your participants um, have everything that you promised within the time frame that you promised. Okay, any comments here? Um, or shall we say questions rather than, or maybe comments, I don't know. Uh, I haven't been, I have to admit, I haven't been following the chat, uh, but there is a question. Um, someone has, yeah. Yes, I, I'm, I'm following the chat. There is a question from Lane in, in the chat. Is anyone else using Peruso? I plan to set that up for our session. I must admit, I don't know what that is. Me neither. Lane, maybe yes. if you want to tell us, maybe uh, we can all. Mm -hmm. Lane has put the link into, uh, into the chat. Oh. 
action. Shared reading with discussion sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, collaborative reading says so, Martha mm -hmm. uh, Nagla. Should, should yes, I, do you, yeah, yes. Do you have, mm -hmm. do you have time? Do you want me to tell you what a peruse, what perusal is? Okay, okay. It's free, first of all. Um, so what you do is you put your readings there, whatever you want them to read, you put them there. You can also put video there. Anything you have the, the right to, you can't you know, put a textbook there without authorization. But the kinds of things we use in EVO, you can put up in there. And then uh, it's a shared copy that everyone sees. And people make comments, they highlight, they ask questions, they upvote each other's comments. And it, it's a whole discussion. And you, as a moderator, can put prompts in there. What do you think of this? When, and, or share ideas or anything. It's, it's side by side that whatever the text or video is, is on one side and all the comments and questions are on the other side. It's remarkable. I use it wow. for my actual job job now. Yeah. Wow, wow. We, some of us have only found out about it today. Obviously, a lot of people are using it. So great, uh, a great idea uh, to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that Christine, then Larissa, and Michelle are our mentors. You know, making abstracts and so outlining, elaborate very good in good English is always a problem of us is our bottleneck of all projects. It is the most needed thing, maybe, to discuss this project with mentors in one of briefing rooms. Because not all people would like to hear our voices, what's going on in our project. But I will be very thankful because I need help here. To mm -hmm. find common rates on citizens is very, very difficult. It my, uh, like Gulnora is fallen from sky. Uh, Christina, thank you very much for you. And Christina, they have me gesagt, wie ich Deutsch spreche. Ja, ich spreche Deutsch sehr gut. Sie kennen das, ich tue mir sehr, wie ich Arbeit habe und so on, so on. But writing project is always a problem. I find proper people. Uh, I have a telegram group. I encourage them, maybe Gulnora and Pazoda will tell some words about that, how we work in a team here. It is very, very um, also not so easy. Therefore, maybe to use this one of uh, breaking room extra for us, is our moderators, because only the first time is the uh, professional development in this style like this. Uh, other years, it's not for so. It was so like this, a uh, common word. This year is very serious. And I must be very serious too. I must add my new knowledge, linguistic skills, okay? Therefore, I ask to get, yes, yes, Christina, dear Christina, please, in one of your briefing room, de de describe all our things. Uh, tell about our errors, about our, uh, what we must, how we must feel to make good, better, better, better. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you, Halima. Um, so I'll address that very briefly. Um, I posted in the chat that we need to set up some uh, discussions among the EVO coordinators regarding the groups. Um, somebody set up a group for each of the uh, proposals, so all the uh, moderators have a group set up for themselves. I'm not sure if the coordinators have looked at those yet. So give us a little bit of time, Halima, to figure that out for everyone. Um, Larissa and I have definitely looked at our group and um, started discussing things there. And uh, if, if I could ask for something, um, Halima, it would be a list of things that you would like to see discussed there. Uh, that would be really helpful, okay? But yes, there will be more coming on that mm -hmm. this week. Okay, I will see how we outline it, what your remarks, how to make it better, what ideas can be added, and maybe somebody will be um, I, so to say, chief coordinator at Gulnora, because she studied in America, I never been there. Uh, therefore, we must make a very working team. 
And next time we will know who is who in Uzbekistan. Uh, this project wants knows I was made by me. It was so difficult for me, this SP, but I am a speech specialist. I know how to do. Here we show this features of English spoken in Uzbekistan. What are sources of English? How varieties are spoken? How English is spoken at about 20 foreign universities where English is a major of interaction. I try to do this, but help me with outlining linguistically, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so I'm just happy. I'm sorry. sorry. My yeah, please, sure. Okay. So, Halima, I'm really proud of you guys. You've gotten this far and you've done so many. You've been wanting to do this for a couple of years. I know you've talked to us about it. And we're all in it. But I don't know about everybody else, but I am a really, a truly visual learner. So if you can even just type those things that you told us in the chat, they all sound like really good things for us to talk with you about. Um, and then we can send you emails and and uh, get a meeting together, a Zoom meeting or whatever we need to do. So we, we want to make sure that it gets covered. But I know nobody else is probably a visual learner like me, but I am. And if you don't mind, give me your top five things that you want us to work on right now and then go from there. Okay, in the chat box, mm -hmm. type it out if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. I would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, this is, this is truly good because if somebody gives us a lot of data, um, um, we kind of, you know, it's better to have a list. Just uh, one thing I would like to go back to, um, Nelly will talk about it in detail in week four, but I would like to go back to um, badges and um, certificates of attendance. Um, just to say that these certificates, if you're offering them, they cannot be for credit. Everything we offer here is for free. We don't have the, the power uh, to give you a credit for professional development. Uh, I fully understand um, how important it is for some teachers, but this, is, uh, this counts as informal training. However, both badges and certificates are very motivational. Even if they just say you have completed the five week training, even if it just says, uh, uh, I love badges, for example. I, I, I love collecting badges. They're, they're so colorful and they really give you this sense of achievement. I will move on now um, to tell you that um, uh, you should be working on your uh, proposal, everything that we just covered in the previous slide, you should be working on it in the EVO 2021 proposals wiki. So yes, our discussion forums, um, in Canvas are great, uh, you know, for coming up with ideas, asking, asking other, others opinions, but all, everything should be really uh, very neat in the proposals wiki when you're, once you're ready to hand in your proposal. Um, and uh, then online platforms and tools, I, I apologize, this is last works, last, uh, last year's um, 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 a graphic and uh, in the meantime, maybe some other uh, uh, platforms have become more popular. So um, for example, Canvas is now free for teachers. I'm not sure it has always been for fr free for teachers, but I love it really. Uh, it's such a good uh, LMS. Moodle is uh, fantastic. Moodle is probably the best. School Schoology is okay. Edmodo is okay. My personal opinion is that these two are okay, while uh, Canvas and Moodle are great. Um, PB works. If you are very visual, like Cheryl and me, I'm also visual, Cheryl. Uh, I like to have everything in a wiki because it's like a web page. It's like a page in a book. Um, and for live meetings, uh, you know, I have Skype here. I'm actually proud because my school, we are teaching on Skype and we are making it work uh, for small groups. Skype is OK, but you can also, uh, of course, Skype, Zoom. Zoom uh, rarely lets you down. We are today on Zoom because uh, 
big blue button, th there were some challenges with it. There will be challenges, especially in live meetings. So just keep your cool. Um, all right. So anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm rushing. Would anybody like to talk about um, online um, platforms of either kind, either the synchronous or the asynchronous kind? Um, Anybody like to say something about platforms? Uh, yeah, I would just, uh, yeah. yes, Natasha, mm -hmm. just uh, right, I would like to remind everyone of uh, Google Classroom. Which, Thank you. Which is not of mentioned here. Yeah, no, it is. no. Google Classroom is not mentioned. That's uh, injustice because yeah. Google Classroom is good, it's uh, yeah. reliable. It's, uh, there's another one that I think I, uh, uh, because I, I created this uh, um, last week, last year, and now it won't even let me create new graphics. Um, oh, yeah. So, uh, because um, Flash is going away. So anyway, yeah. Google Classroom, if anybody can think of anything else that you have yeah, tried and, and that you... Uh, mm -hmm. If you have yeah. accounts on Microsoft, Microsoft Teams also, Yes. Uh, really deserves Microsoft to be mentioned yes. because of its uh, too many features and uh, the possibility to even to have loud readers and blackboard whiteboard sh shared whiteboard and a lot of other features okay it's a complete lms actually yeah, microsoft sure. teams if you're using that um, yeah, uh, it's not free unless your school has an account true, and it's a bit um, top down, you know, so you have to have uh, somebody give you like your rights. And Martha says in, uh, in the chat that Schoology has stopped accepting users due to pandemic, so that's sad. Schoology is okay. Uh, all right. Uh, online moderation. Sorry, Natasha. Nata one of the big Mabar, one of the big issues with Google um, Classroom is some areas of the world cannot get Google Classroom because exactly. of the ban. Like China, yeah. Yeah, so that that's you important. know sometimes that's an issue. Um, mm -hmm. That's why mm -hmm. sometimes we don't use Google. I mean, I love yeah. Google Classroom, it's fine, yeah, but you know, you got to be really mindful of like where you think you're going to be having your audience yeah. um, for your sessions. Something. So that's something you have to think yeah. about. Um, if, you are, if you think you'll be drawing any from some of those banned countries, you have yeah. to really yeah, think about yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, those that's issues. That's truly important. Thank you. Jim. Same thing with Microsoft, it's banned in certain places yeah. too. So yeah. keep that in mind. So, yeah, yeah, Cheryl. good point. Uh, okay, so real quick, like I just glanced at perusal and um, I would like to make sure everybody remembers that we have been through yeah, all kinds of things that we can get, get to owning something. And, yeah. Okay, hang on just a second. Um, and then um, and then all of a sudden after you've used it for a while then when they get they meet a certain criteria then they sell it off to somebody which was the intent yeah. of the already uh yeah. so I, I i know i like moodle okay and and it's easy to use and i've used moodle since gosh i don't know like uh 1999 or something like that anyway um but you know, getting somewhere where you ha we have it available to us, and we've all always had it available to us. And uh, yeah, sorry about that. Yes, 2001. So I, I'd like for you to think about that. And then also, you know, like I had uh, Wiki Spaces, and it was on and on forever, and I loved it. Now I, they have some iteration that they've still have a free version. But as you guys know, because of my daughter being ill and almost dying, I had to take early retirement, which took me out of the classroom. So I'm not always in an official classroom. And so I don't have, I'm like, a, you remember those old knights that didn't have a place? They, they had a special name for them, but I can't remember what it is right now. But anyway, you just go in and you were like itinerant, you know, like a, a, yes. a journeyman, yes. like a journeyman. Okay. I think, so, yeah. 
that's the way Sorry, I am. you and I have been a long time online, so we know. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so Sorry. I don't, Sorry. I don't, I don't get the little perk that they try to draw us into there. And then a lot of these are expensive. So please think about those issues too. I hope with your with the people that yes. you're helping, because in yes. many of these countries, yes, they may be with a school, but will they always be with a school? But with you know, like for me, I'm still teaching. I mean, it's not like like last year I did teach three of the four nine weeks, so I had a school. But anywho, just something that I hope that everybody will think about. And don't forget, we've tried things like Slack and everything like that. Slack's good. All those things are good. But Great. once you learn something, just go ahead and stick with it. And, you know, I used to be drawn to shiny objects. Dear moderators, <laughs> I am All the apps and things, you know, something new. Yeah, well, me too. Not. But you just don't, you shouldn't get attached. Nothing lasts right. forever online. Sorry. Everything goes away, especially good things. Good things. Nope. We've been using Yahoo groups forever and ever yeah. and ever as moderators and coordinators. Yes, right. I have Go a on. question, Christina. Yeah, uh, please do. Please do. Oh, yeah. no, this uh, proverb is common. Augen Zeuge. I envy you, dear moderators. You are so keen in all new tools. I love um, Canvas and I love Moodle. Please, if Marta will uh, demonstrate how her project is mapped up in uh, uh, Canvas, I will get the possibility to see with my own eyes and make some kind of mapping for my project. You know, we are learning with our eyes what is done. And then yes. maybe to get an extra section in this um, uh, week or another, how to migrate with our previous yes. project from Google Plus to Canvas or to Moodle. It is forgetting, you know, maybe yes. the section of making logos is not so because all project begins with lo logos. Uh, moderator is me, lead moderator, I think it. What can be attractive logo? Logos are done, but migrating, it is a problem for us. We are from developing country, you know. I know we did. I was with Nelly Miller many times and have many uh, classes here, but I like Canvas. Maybe, Martha, you will demonstrate how your project is mapped up in a canvas, right? For me, I will see how it's made. Then I will ask uh, Vance to migrate. This why zip it, also save it uh, 2019, um, also proposal to canvas. And then we ask Moodle, why Moodle? All universities of Uzbekistan are Moodle. All uh, curricula, all syllabi, we must be trained very seriously because people are speaking English are not educated in IT. If IT specialists, they do not, they do not read. Yeah, I see, uh, Christina, it was wonderful. I will uh, step by step also uh, learn how to use Canvas. But in our case, maybe I will see how my project in a canvas already and then my eyes will be master and i will uh, learn uh, and i will study with my colleagues here how to do things okay please don't forget that we are so different you're a master we are only yes. learning okay? oh, thank, uh, you thank, you. thank you thank you thank you yeah i would thank just like much, to yeah. tell you for the record I am using Canvas as a teacher for the first time this year, so I am learning as I go, mm -hmm. and I'm yeah. probably going to make. I still haven't answered Lane's uh, question about the left side of the. I saw your question, Lane. I'm working on it, but this is the pleasure of of learning together, and this is why we call this a moderator session, uh, a moderator development session. Just one thing about migration and everything that both Cheryl and Halima mentioned. So you need to have your, I learned this the difficult way. You need to have all your materials offline, safe, or they will disappear. You will blink and they will be gone together with the platform. Boom, no, lo no longer there. So have everything offline, download everything all the time. Uh, that's the only safe version. And then keep like external hard disk copies and nothing lasts forever online. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, just one uh, yes, please, tool I think please. should be mentioned here is uh, Flipgrid. I really love this Flipgrid. tool. I frequently use it for my assessment or the assessment of my students. 
and it is really a very good tool for socializing, for interacting, for giving uh, room to creativity. And uh, okay, it's, it's a very good tool for uh, uh, socializing and keeping uh, even for uh, professional development going on. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yes, Flipgrid is also new to me. I heard about it uh, last summer uh, in the uh, in the TESOL convention, and so many people were talking about it. So another thing yeah. I will look at. Thank you, Mbarek. I haven't tried it yet, but it seems to be great. Uh, I think That's... maybe online online moderation is the most important thing that we are uh, doing. Um, doing together we are working on developing developing so um half of my text is hidden now with the with the, the the pictures but i will tell you what it says start reflecting on different aspects and potential problems of online moderation moderation someone said last time that we scared him he's a new moderator but this is not here to scare you if you anticipate potential problems you will be able to prevent them. And that way you will uh, avoid or overcome them, or at least you won't panic when they happen. Uh, and this is something where we can have a lot of fun. Yes, fun this week, discussing um, problems experienced moderators uh, encounters. We mentioned something last time. I would say the problem number one is people not getting into your platforms because they don't know how, they don't know where the course is, they, uh, they get lost, or people getting busy and going elsewhere and then being absent and then you lose people along the way. So you might try, want to try to prevent that. Um, anything else that you would like to not scare uh, new moderators with, but just maybe share? as potential, shall we say, challenges? Because that's the popular word, potential challenges. So anyone like to share something that you experienced, that you are worried about? So just let, if you make a mistake, just stop, or if there's a problem, just stop. And then, you know, look it over briefly. And if you briefly cannot figure it out, that's when you go ahead and ask for help. Don't do like I did when I was first new. I would wander around and think about it for days and try this and try that. And, and, and I could have had the problem solved if I just asked for help. So, yeah. Or even okay. look at the help ask pages. Help. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I did the same thing, but that was our learning process, I think. Maybe because we are visual, we have to make blunders. Yes, so uh, make... Um, I'm reading from the chat because this is really yes, useful. Um, make very clear instructions about uh, logging in. Uh, it can be a video. I find creating videos uh, easier than typing everything down. Or it can be step by step with pictures. It has to be very simple. Think about teaching kids English for the first time. It has to be that simple. Not kids, maybe adults. Uh, be flexible with workload, optional activities, and losing participants. How do you get them back? Um, yeah, asking is yeah. How do you get back the participants you lost? Well, if you if you don't have too many participants, you can email them or you can you know ask if they need help. Um, come up with some new. Try to find out why they're not there. Sometimes. We all get busy and we have to step back. Maybe just, you know, keep it open for longer if you can afford it. Yeah. I think yes, we are going the, to. Yeah, please. Natasha, mm -hmm. One of the things, the biggest thing that you got to really think about when you're creating whatever you're doing with your courses is time. How much time are you asking whoever is going to join your group, um, your session to uh invest okay so basically once you you know just dig in dig in do something make something but then sit back and go okay if i was doing this how much time do i have to invest because that's a major factor this is not something they're paying for so you know 
there's no reason they have to actually invest the time. So you don't want it to be so overburdened in a time investment that they're not going to want to be there, you know, and you don't want it to be so little that they don't care. So you, it's kind of a balance. But the only way you could do that is to just get in, do whatever you want to do, write whatever you want to write, and then sit back as yourself and as an outsider yes. and look at it. Yes. Yes. And then really yes. think, oh my God, yeah. would I be going crazy with my work schedule and everything to do this? Because that's what they're thinking. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's really uh, that's really perfect. Coming from a from an experienced moderator, uh, none of us could have said it better. This was just that's it. Uh, the the workload should be just right. And how do you know? Well, you think about it before the session starts, uh, and then it's very good uh, to come back and offer the session the year after because then we will have learned some things and um, maybe improved on and i would just like to say um about online moderate moderation something that's uh, not in the slide so it's maybe not clear uh sorry i'm just kind of checking what i have uh, left uh the very important thing uh the the most important thing is to be there just be there for your participants answer answer their whatever questions, posts. Now, I don't mean, let's say you end up, there's one potential challenge. You may end up with too many participants. Maybe you're offering too many for you. Maybe you, you might be surprised. Maybe you're offering the session for the first time and it, it's such an interesting thing that everybody wants to be in it. So what do you do? You can't talk to everyone. Well, in that case, you encourage them to talk to each other um, or you should, Another thing, you should have co-moderators. And that's why we moderate week by week. So that now I can focus on week two and I can keep focusing on week two after week two is over. So uh, actually I'm done. And I did uh, just uh, uh, Sorry, yes. Natasha, no. I would just like to add one point. It's about uh, sending reminders. Personally, I really, it helps me a lot when I get uh, a reminder. Yes. Yes. And each reminder with the li with the links to the sessions, if there are any or any uh, resources or anything that can be useful to to me to, or to help me to do the the tasks. So sending reminders is a very good, uh, let's say, option to do all the time with uh, online moderation. Yes. 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 But don't uh, oh, don't get offended if they don't do it. Send a reminder, <laughs> maybe, they, you know, uh, how busy we all get. At the end of the day, maybe you just want to sleep. But okay. uh, you, you get a reminder and that, that it's like reminding people to do homework. Yeah. Uh, you get the reminder and then uh, it clarifies, uh, it clarifies where, uh, what they should be doing. Maybe they don't know what they should be doing at the point, at the moment. Uh, I'm just looking at the, at the chat because I'm pretty much done with my with my presentation. Um, uh, that's an interesting question. What's the radio, ratio between engaged and lost participants? It uh, depends. It's quite high, I think. Um, and this is something you should live with. Uh, the fact that you're going to lose participants along the way. Um, yes. It's important to have help from co-moderators, divide up the time and the workload. Yes. Listen, uh, don't take listen, don't take anything personal, guys. Don't take mm -hmm. anything personal from the participants. Yes. They're there, yes. you're there. We're all doing the best we can do. You can't take anything personal. Don't yes. take it yes. personal. Yes. Okay. They're far away. You're communicating <laughs> mostly asynchronously. Uh, one word, don't kind of lie at night awake thinking about that one word somebody used, maybe in a hurry, or, you know, uh, don't worry, have fun. You're offering this for free. You're already doing much more than most people. That's too many comparatives and superlatives in that sentence, yeah. but you're all awesome. You know, you, you, should, you should be aware of that. Break people uh, up into smaller groups, absolutely teaming up. 
is a great idea. Yes. Personalized reminders uh, and engaging activities. Yes, let's not forget that your activities need to be engaging and interesting in the first in the first place. Um, yeah, smaller groups, rotating. Um, com different communication styles, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, as I said, this is pretty much it, but um, the, 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 this slide says feedback, questions, suggestions, so we can stay together for um, a little longer. Uh, I would like to finish around uh, on not maybe if not on the hour then an hour and something Natasha uh, can I make so... one more suggestion please Cheryl I like your question very well engage it and plus participant in case of Uzbekistan all depends of trainer and I hope that uh, Gulnora and Tozoda they're working at the Flagman University of uh, Tashkent. They will also persuade teachers, faculty members, and students. But all depends from Mr. Rector. If the rector knows about us, it's good. If he doesn't know, he says, who is Halimapa? Why she make project? What's the project deal bearing card? And so on and so on. In our case, we have an extra organization with about 100 Fifty thousand members who steer, although they know that, and no, Gulnora. Uh, it is our professional organization, and this organization is a corporative member of Chisol. They're all English teachers. One hundred fifty thousand. They all are members and pay membership, and they belong to Chisol. We try to make in history of Tiso in the year of celebration. Who, who went to America? Who make and so some, so some? But now it is oh, okay, good. Okay, good. I do not speak. Good. Also, in our case, it is professional or. What just happened? Can I make one uh, quick little yeah, suggestion? Please do, please do, um, please do. Like guys, you know, you, you guys like to do a lot of videos or PowerPoints um, coming from a standpoint of teaching online, which I've been doing for years now. Um, if you load up your PowerPoint with a zillion lines of text, you are going to shut people out because yes. literally there is a physical issue of how long somebody could sit at a screen and read yes. a slide. Yes. Yes. And when yes. they're reading yes. a slide, they're not listening to you. And remember, if you're doing something that's live or that you're speaking, it's you there should be listening to not reading a slide. Okay, Absolutely. so strong, Absolutely. strong suggestion. If you find your slides are loaded up with a ton of text, rethink, rethink. It's yes. okay to put key points, but it really is uh, insane when you when you load it up with a ton of text. The first thing the person who is listening or the participant is anybody online is going to do is tune out. Yeah. So well, that is a, mm -hmm. a really strong suggestion, guys. I mean, if there's yeah. a lot of reading that you want them to do, great. Give it to them in something that they could download and read. Uh, you know, off, off the offline. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Slides, slides are just and, a tool. Yeah. Or it's maybe definitely the, guarantee that you're going to lose your participants. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, well, yeah, I think one thing, yeah. one thing you shouldn't do or should rethink is uploading a slide like as a weekly reading with lots of bullet points and then having people read it asynchronously. To me, when people tell me in conferences, like I'll share my slides. Well, your slides don't mean anything to me. Either I heard you or I didn't, but if you just send me your slides, they, you know, they're beautiful to look at, but that's it. So I agree. 
And also don't overload people with readings generally, I would say, from the point of view of a participant. Yeah, there should be readings. We have quite a few this week, but they're optional and you should really choose one. I mean, if you're very ambitious, you can read all of them, but uh, you should choose one and, and then comment on it briefly and then go on with your own experience and opinion. So uh, anything else? Yeah, all suggestions are really welcome, uh, whether they're to us as coordinators or uh, to other moderators, we are here in a shared, in a shared learning experience. Yes, avoiding seven pitfalls. An oldie, but a goodie, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so anyway, are we wrapping up? I kind of don't know. I'm one of those people who hang on the phone because they don't know how to say goodbye. So uh, would somebody else, uh, I, I, maybe I would like to, to give uh, uh, the chance to um, Barak and uh, Sanya to say something if, if, they, if they wish. Not that I'm putting you on the spot, but we will be in week two together. Yeah, we, uh, we so... will be the moderators for week three. Yeah. Barak. Yeah. Are we talking at the same time? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, I no, just want to mute. No, I'm. I'm unmuted. Yep. I just wanted to add that our discussions continue in Canvas. We have quite a few discussions in Canvas. We'll, be, we'll try to be there for you. If you have questions, post them there and we'll try to reply if we know the answer. If not, we'll discuss all the issues together. There are quite a few of us here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what I want to say is that you you are not alone. We are here with you. And uh, whenever you have a problem or an issue, you reach out either for the coordination team or for one of the uh, moderators. So anyways, don't keep it uh, with you. Yeah. You have just to say what is the issue and share your problem. There are a lot of people who can jump in to, to help. So just feel at home and it's not uh, a big deal. OK, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. See you in Canvas. <laughs> yeah. So see you in Canvas. I think then maybe we should wrap up unless someone uh, uh, unless someone has something else to say. Uh, in that case, I'm, I'm, am I, are we saying goodbye? I'm kind of one of those people who don't know when it's over. <laughs> yes. OK. So uh, let's hear yeah, you Natasha. say it, Natasha. Go ahead. Yeah. You can do Goodbye, it. everyone. See you in Canvas. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, hold on Bye. just a second. Um, I ask yes. that the coordinators hang on for just a little bit uh, yeah. to discuss something, if that's possible. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Absolutely. So goodbye, everyone else. <laughs>